Hi there, it's George the Fragrance Apprentice and here are my top 10 autumn fragrances for life. I haven't done one of these in several years, so that gives me a pass, right? It gives me a pass for doing it now, I hope, right? These fragrance for life videos are, if I could use one word to describe them, stressful. Uh, the thought of not having all of the options that I now have with fragrances is uh, kind of impossible to think about. But I think that how it goes is if, you know, your house is on fire, burning building, you can only save 10. If you have time to save 10 fragrances, you've got a lot of time, buddy. You could probably save some other things. Um, but if you can only save 10 fragrances, 10 autumn fragrances, and this was tough, this was hard. Um, so I wanted to even give honorable mentions. Um, and then I thought, well, I can't. And then I thought, oh yeah, I can, because this is my list and I can do whatever I want. So I'm going to give you three honorable mentions here. Let's go for it. I'm going to give you three very quick honorable mentions and why, and then we'll get straight to the list. First, so first honorable mention is this is Russia's Man by Russia's. And what I mean by this is Bond Number no. 9's New Harlem. I feel as though I'm cursed with uh, Bond Number no. 9's New Harlem, or, you know, I'll take Russia's Man now. I feel as though I'm cursed with New Harlem. The first time I got it, we went on a video shoot on location and it broke and it leaked out everywhere and I'd spent a big amount of money for that. Second time I got it, which is the bottle I own now, which is my folks house it the juice was darker and it smelt more bitter so i think it was a fake i got it off um i think notino and it was this dark juice so i've bought new harlem twice i've never been able to enjoy it and it's one of my favorite fragrances of all time i feel really really freaking cursed with uh, new harlem so i'd want that but i am also happy to have rush s man great vanilla lavender coffee scent this is more blurry than new harlem new harlem is gorgeous, beautiful, like streaks and spikes of like lavender, like you're in the middle of a lavender field with a flat white latte uh, that's vanilla flavored and you're drinking it whilst you're inhaling the lavender. It's absolutely magical. This is that, but just completely blurred, which is fine. I like Russia's Man, not a big fan of the bottle, but that's what it is. The second one is for Pan 1270. Love this fragrance so much. I would need it for nostalgia reasons, and I'd want it because, well, I really like it, I really love this fragrance, but I don't know, it just wasn't, this was not one of my first choices, and by the time that I'd made my initial 10 choices, I thought, huh, I thought that Pan 1270 would be in here somewhere. Great kind of like combination of bubblegum, cognac, and pineapple. Great, great night out fragrance, and wonderful autumn fragrance. I think one of the things that bothers me is maybe the projection longevity isn't that great in the colder autumn months, but that's by the by, this is still a great fragrance. And that duck that I love, he, he enjoys it, doesn't he? You enjoy this one, don't you, duck? Don't you? The third honorable mention, So Close Yet So Far, Imaginary Authors, Memoirs of a Trespasser. Again, one that I was just surprised that I wouldn't make the commitment to put it in the actual list. To me, this is always you're in a really lovely old atmospheric bookshop whilst eating vanilla ice cream. So you've got the smells of the old paper and the pages and maybe there's like a little open fire where there's some wood burning and you're eating this delicious uh, vanilla ice cream. That is always Memoirs of a Trespasser to me. And I've worn it quite a bit, as you can see, worn it quite a lot. But it's one of those fragrances where I'll probably wear this maybe four or five times a year. <laughs> and I'll enjoy those wearings and it's great, but then I, I get on with my other fragrances. But I, I do love this very much, and, um, you know, if I had time to get these three additional bottles whilst uh, I'm, I was dodging the fires, I, I would make that effort to do that. So I, I guess we're going in a ascending order. This will be my number 10. This is SM Cafe by Strangers. Um, wonderful. Wonderful fragrance. I've spoken about it. So, again, coffee is a note that I do like. It's interesting, the note of coffee got me into uh, drinking coffee. I wasn't really a coffee drinker until I started realizing that I enjoyed the smell of it in fragrance. Rich coffee with honey, amber, myrrh, some beeswax. Really great, just really rich and profound. And all of all of Strangers stuff, but I love the majority of them. I think the print's really great. But I, I'd need this, I, I would absolutely need this. If for some reason all the fragrances went away, I'd need to have SM Cafe because it's such a great, unique, and wonderful experience of smelling like coffee. Number nine, I would, well, I'd probably try and get one million if I could, but um, if I didn't, you know, I'd just go into Boots the next day and get it. So it's not maybe a priority in that sense because it's it, uh, one million is eternal in this fragrance world, but I, I love one million. I still like it. 
some absolute haters of this fragrance, some people absolutely despise this fragrance. All I'm gonna say is, look, each to each to their own, but you're wrong. You're wrong about one million. You always were. Nobody had the guts to tell you you were wrong about one, one million. I'm like, oh my god, this is so overbearing. This is so awful. This is so it's too much and too sweet and too bubblegummy. Yeah, and it was unique and it was different and it changed the game. And nobody else at the time had the balls to do what Paco Rabanne did. Oh, it's juvenile, bubblegum. Yes, it was different. It made a mark. There was nothing like it on the market. That's why it was such a big thing. And the bottle design was laughed at, smeared at, but everybody freaking loved this fragrance. Everybody adored this fragrance. I get it because I feel the same way about Sauvage, right? I feel the same way that people felt about One Million at the time who hated it the way that I felt, or the way that I feel about Sauvage. I get it, and maybe that's just a generational thing. But One Million's great, it's an absolute classic. It's, it's beautiful, it's wonderful, and I have a lot of good memories of it. My dad wore this a lot in his 50s. <laughs> but, uh, so I've got kind of a different connotation in, in that sense as well. But One Million's brilliant, and I would, I'd need to have it. Next one is this, Versace Pour Homme. And what I mean by that is Tom Ford's Oud Wood. Um, I was thinking of actually just having a blank space for Oud Wood because I'd need Oud Wood. I would absolutely need Oud Wood as my final 10 autumnal fragrances. It really is amazing and, and I used it up in such a short period of time when I had it. I had it for only 18 months and I just went through it and I, that's when I had more fragrances than I have now. So that's quite impressive. I will buy my 100 milliliter of Oud Wood eventually. But right now I've got this. It's fine, it's the next best thing, but this or Oud Wood would be an absolute non-negotiable. It's sexy, it's confident, it's brilliant, it's wonderful. I'd need that in my autumn collection forever. It's a beautiful fragrance. If you've never checked out Oud Wood and you're in your mid to late 20s and you want something that smells like a, a really confident, attractive, sexy bloke, Oud Wood is something you gotta check out. Um, this is get, starting to get really difficult to put into numbers because these are some of my favorite fragrances of all time. Next one is Feb Delicieuse. This should probably be higher. What am I doing? <sighs> this is really tough. No, okay, I won't put, I won't, well, I'm not giving that away, I'm not. Okay, next one is Vulgari Man in black. I've only had this for about two months. I cannot be without this fragrance now. I've worn it so, so much. One of my favorite purchases of this year. I thought that I wouldn't need this because I have Spice Plum Extreme. Very, very different fragrances. Similar vibes, same notes almost, but very, very different tonally. This is a man's man's fragrance. This is very, very sexy. This is in that same league as Oud Wood. A spicy, sexy, oriental fragrance. There's some real backbone to this. Really, really great spices. And that beautiful Italian vulgari craftsmanship that is in here is second to none. This is a mystical fragrance to me. This is very, very magical. Something that when I put on, I'm in the zone, I'm confident, and that will probably translate to you as well. This is a very, very confidence-inducing fragrance, and it's made a mark on me very, very quickly. You know, this could, um, I might, if I've got this and Versace Oud Noir, I might not be buying Oud Wood anytime soon because I'm, I've kind of got that with me, but um, this is something else, really. Okay, next one. Creed's Royal Oud, another non-negotiable. Probably the last Creed fragrance that's actually worth its price tag. Um, that hasn't been reformulated to absolute death. Beautiful, peppery, powerful, strong, beast mode enveloping of a room fragrance. Spicy, sexy, different. This is um, my film directing fragrance. If I direct films, um, or if I get any directing jobs, I always wear Royal Oud because you have to be master and commander when you're directing a short, a commercial project, or a feature film. Uh, you need to be the boss, you need to be in control, you need to have your wits about you. There is no other fragrance in my collection that, that can put me in a mood, a state of mind, that Royal Oud does. So yes, yeah, non-negotiable. I'm very timid spraying this because I don't want to use it all of it up and then I'll have to rebuy and nobody wants to rebuy Creed's anymore. Now we get to Feb Delicious in its rightful place, a little bit higher up on the list. In fact, we're coming, nearly coming to the end of this list. Feb Delicious, one of the greatest fragrances I've ever smelled in my entire life. And I've smelled 
probably thousands of fragrances at this point. Um, I don't know how to feel about that. Vanilla, praline, tonka bean. Using tonka bean in a unique way in an oversaturated market of tonka bean. But it's the way that the tonka bean... I can't even describe to you how fucking good this is. I just... It's one of these fragrances where I just want to grab you and, and, and just take you out of your room or wherever you're watching this and just spray this on you and go, holy shit, what do you think, right? It's that fucking good. Um, it's the way that the like this clean layer of vanilla goes along with the pralines and the tonka and it's like this dessert, but it's on you and you smell freaking delicious. And I mean, that's presumably why it's Fev Delicious because you are absolutely delicious. One of my favorite fragrances ever. Now we're getting to the real nitty gritty. I would have to save this, L'Instant de Guerlain Eau Extreme, because I'm not buying the new version. I, don't, I haven't even smelt the new version, you know? I mean, two reformulations in, what, five years? That's not good, that's not healthy for any uh, any brand. You have the original Lidge, which has the black bars, which I do have a bottle of, I only exclusively spray that on my birthday. But I am happy with this version, the sunnier version. It's the, um, I call this version, it's always sunny in L'Instant de Guerlain. Um, because it is brighter, it's more citrusy, the chocolate and cacao really toned down. But yeah, I, I, I wear this so much. Uh, this is my second bottle of this version. I've actually got another backup bottle. So I'm nearly, once I get to halfway through here, I'll be halfway through my supply of this style, Linstant de Guerlain Eau Extreme. So I'm being careful with wearing this one because I soaked through the first one. Beautiful patchouli. Cocoa, citrus, star anise, old school fragrance vibes. So well done, so beautiful. It, hey, if there are any perfumiers out there, try and clone me the original Instant Golan Eau Extreme. Hit me up. Final three here, and obviously, if you don't know my thoughts about Pure Malt, welcome to the channel. This is a big, big part of my life. Whiskey's a big part of my life, Scotland. There's, there's too much to talk about right here, right now, and you just want the list information, right? Just go watch my review of Pure Malt. I would be heartbroken if this got taken away, and it has been discontinued. So yes, I would I would just jump in to get this. I do have a backup bottle of this, ironically, in my childhood home in Scotland, which is cute. Um, but Pure Malt is it's a big part of my life. It's I couldn't be without it. And then finally, you probably already know, it's my past and my present. Which one should I go for? I'll go for my present. Tom Ford Omre Noir. This is my current signature scent. I love it. It is just who I am at the moment. This is an amazing scent. Compliment getting. Women freaking go crazy over this if that's what you want. If you want, if all you care about is, you know, the women going over, going nuts over you and people giving you compliments, this will do it for you. It's so confident, so steadfast. It's fantastic. Go try it on. Don't try it on paper, don't try it on card, wear it, put it on your skin, you'll see how amazing this is. But I'd say that my number one fragrance I could not have without in the Autumn Fall is Duron. Um, for those of you who know, this is the sex fragrance. The sexy sex sex fragrance that I always talk about, this is the sex fragrance. You don't need those lists, stop telling yourself, stop, stop looking at Michelle. Stop, stop looking at her abs. Look at me, look at my eyes. I'm telling you, you don't need all the lists. I know you're not just watching Michelle because of her freaking lists and her fragrance information. If you want some serious advice about getting the sexy sex, listen to The Sex Apprentice, and The Sex Apprentice is telling you right now, and if you wear Duron, you'll get the sex. I thought I was gonna go into like a Scott Steiner promo there. You know, they say that all sex fragrances are created equal, but you look at Duron, and you look at Duron 2020, and you can see that that statement is not true. You see, usually, if you have a sexy fragrance, you got two-thirds chance of winning. But Duron original is a sex freak, and it's not normal. Professional wrestling fans, are you out there? Do you watch my channel? I'm thinking of doing a 10 fragrances that are all elite. But I don't know if... I don't know if that's a good idea. Please, professional wrestling fans, hit me up. I'll, I'll, do, it. I'll, I'll do it for you. I don't care if it only gets four views. I'll... I'll do it for you. Anyway, those were my 10 awesome fragrances that I simply cannot live without. 10 awesome fragrances for life and with some uh, cheeky honorable mentions. Hope you enjoyed this list. And if you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want to give more, 
you can always donate to my PayPal. That goes towards future videos. Thank you so much on the Frames Race. I'll see you tomorrow.